Hey guys, how's it going? Marcelo here. There is no music playing in this video today because it's not meant to be taken as a serious video, but I do... This is an important story. If you want much more insight on me as a gamer. And just like, I guess, as a person in general. So... Again, not meant to be, to be taken as a serious video per se, but the message is kind of... Is there a message? I don't fucking know. <laughs> this is my gaming story. So, I don't really... Let me just say, first off, um, happy Thanksgiving. I, I don't honestly know when this is going up. It could be going up before Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving, or after Thanksgiving. So, let me make the uh, proper greetings. <clears throat> if this comes up before Thanksgiving... I hope you guys have a really good Thanksgiving when it comes. If this comes out on Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. If this comes out after Thanksgiving, I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. If you're watching this way, 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 like years after things, th this 2015 Thanksgiving, I hope all your Thanksgivings are good. <laughs> With that out of the way, uh, let's get a little, again, not too serious, but let's begin with the story. So... As you know, <laughs> as, of course, everyone would know at this point, those who know me personally, those who know me um, online, I'm a big Crash Bandicoot fan. And, don't worry, this plays into Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is like a Thanksgiving special of sorts, which is why I didn't know how to make my greeting, <laughs> depending on when this goes up. Back to the story. Um, I grew up with Crash. And everyone's been telling me things about Crash. And my opinions have always been based off what people tell me. For the most part. Of course, I don't just always blindly follow people. But I've always gotten concerns, questions, things. People have just been like, you should do this. And like not even asking me opinions and such. But one of the questions that I got... One of the bigger questions I've been getting for the Crash fan film project is, well, why don't you just make some kind of like a smaller scale 2D animation of Crash? No, not a whole lot of, not to say not a whole lot of effort, but I mean like, you know, it's easier to make, it's faster to make, you can, you know, make something cool because you're you, you know, people tell me I'm creative, so they'll be like, you know, you're an artist, you can do some really cool sprite stuff for Crash and 2D stuff, why don't you just make it smaller, 10 minutes, easily, 20th anniversary thing, if that's how you want to do it, there you go, why don't you just make it, don't even really focus on 3D, that's the main thing, don't focus so much on 3D, you're not going to get that done in time, just do something smaller. Do you know what this series has done for me? Not just, you know, it's opened up and shown so many things to me. I can't go that simple for a series like this that when I say this is my favorite franchise, I mean this is my favorite franchise. And there's this whole thing, there's a whole, it's been like a wild ride with me in this series. Um, so, what do I even begin? Um, when I was in elementary school, that's where I was usually taking any time I could. I've been drawing since I was super, as, lo as long as I've been playing video games, which was around two or three, that's about the time I was drawing as well. So drawing and video games have always gone hand in hand for me my entire life. Keep in mind I'm 20 now at the time of this recording, so it's been, you know, video games and drawing and especially Crash being my first, you know, game, it's been there my entire life. But questionable things have happened and all that. So just to show you how I never really revealed the story too much. I mean, to certain people and to a certain extent in the story, I have. But I haven't really given the full story of Crash, of gaming, and of how I've grown up with all of that. And how people's judgments and opinions and statements on me and all that have affected me. So... Essentially, this is why I'm thankful for Crash. Of course, I'm thankful for family. I'm thankful for friends. I'm thankful for fans. I'm thankful for the videos and all of that. This is a gaming channel, so I'm going to generalize it. I mean, specify it to Crash for this video. So, I had been drawing my entire life. And I would always try and draw Crash. Do I still have it here? I don't, but I used to, I actually kept laminated a very, very old drawing I did of Crash 
a long, long time ago, and it's a kid's drawing, so, you know, but I've gotten better over the years. I've always practiced. I've always done things, and I would always draw in school. So, in elementary school, I would always draw Crash. And people who, you know, it was around 2000, what was it, like, no one really gave, okay, not to say, no one gave a crap in terms of, uh, putting opinions on, you know, me and liking Crash and all that, but my drawings were always there, like, first grade, second grade, third grade. It was around the time of fourth to sixth grade where I was really drawing Crash, and, you know, in class and at recess and all that, but, uh, this was around the time of, I want to say, throwing out years out there, I'm not going to get it down specifically in my head right now, but it was around 2000... Four ish around there, so we were like PS2 era, going to soon transition to PS3 and all that. So this was around the time that shooters were coming up and platformers weren't. It was that shift. We've always been talking about this kind of a shift where shooters are the up and coming thing. They're the hip and the up and his thing, and then kid friendly, family friendly, 3D platformers. Light Crash and all that, That's this was around the year that those were kind of starting to get a little more like, eh, that was alright and all that, but look at these shooters, look at these more mature, advanced, darker, grittier kinds of games and all that. I've always talked to Crash. So I would always draw Crash, and people would always be like, oh, yeah, what are you drawing there? Is that like a, some weird cartoon dog? Is that a fox? Is that like a what Crash? Be who, what? I think I know that from like th three years ago, four years ago. And people will always be like, why the hell do you like that? Why are you drawing that kind of stuff? You're kind of weird for that. And I got that a lot. So I never exactly let it affect me until this one part of the story. So all of those opinions and all of those, you know, judgments, I would always try to brush them off. No one ever bullied me about that kind of stuff. I never got the crap kicked out of me or anything like that. I've never really been in a fight before. So, arguments probably from what I remember, but fights, no. But it did affect me in this kind of a way to where it wasn't anything like I had to run to my parents or anything, my mom or something like that. Like, not, not like that. It never affected me in a deep emotional kind of a state, but it affected me in a way of how I thought about games. So I was like, is this really just like, do I need to keep doing this? Like, do I need to keep clinging on to Crash? I mean, yeah, I like the games, I love the franchise, but there are these other games I would probably want to explore, and that w that carried over into junior high. And that's when Call of Duty and all that was really getting, you know, it was up and coming, it was really popular, so... That's all I heard <laughs> during break now, not recess, but during break, everyone talking about, you know, RuneScape and Call of Duty <laughs> and stuff like that, and never got into RuneScape, but Call of Duty was always there, and I'm like, that's where the opinion started to form. I was like, well, what's so good about Call of Duty? There's no main character you follow necessarily that you grow an attachment to. It's not anything like Crash, to the point of, like, characters you get to know and essentially grow up with and care about and stuff like that. So opinions like that is where, that's where that all started to form. Only thing was, I had neighborhood friends who would also play Call of Duty, like, a lot. And so it was pretty much literally everywhere, all these shooter games, all these more grittier games, and people saying to me, why do you keep playing Crash? Why do you like that so much? I don't even know really what that is. I don't think I care. So, And again, it didn't affect me in an emotional way, but it affected me in a way where I was like, should I try these kinds of games? These shooter games? I mean... So there was a time where... Here's where it comes. I feel like I'm in an AA meeting. <laughs> Hello, my name is Marcelo Espinosa. <laughs> this, is, this is what happened. I abandoned Crash for Call of Duty. And I bought Modern Warfare 1. And I tried to play it. And I did not enjoy it. <laughs> I could not for the I tried to get my brother to play with me. And my brother is just like me. He loves Mario and he loves Crash. And he like really gets into those games. He doesn't like shooters or all that. And he doesn't care for them. So of course he wouldn't really want to jump on with me. So we played like one match and that was it. 
So, that's his entire Call of Duty experience. I actually try to play these games. I would record my friends playing them uh, at their houses. Those, those kinds of games. And I was trying to fit into that to find out how this fan base works. How is it that they can play these games and get so like, oh yeah, I mean like, yeah, you're playing with your friends and all that, but it's like, that, it's weird. I still don't understand it to this day. How people can extensively go, every new Call of Duty, we've got Black Ops 3, you know, so, every one that comes out, oh, we have to get it, oh, Black Ops, and, you know, Modern Warfare and all that, oh my god, so, you know, intriguing and so innovative, and they do so many things, oh my god, I never got that. But for this period of time, in terms of gaming, I was struggling, I was like, do I keep playing these kinds of, you know, more E-rated, kid-friendly games, or should I try to leap into these more darker games, because everyone else is doing that? So it was almost like a peer pressure thing, in a way. I mean, again, it wasn't like people were bullying me, you better play COD or I'll kick your ass, and I'm like, oh no, okay, okay, I mean, I guess I'll go buy it. <laughs> Nothing like that, it was just like, it was experimental. So there was a lengthy period of time where I wasn't playing Crash, because I was like, I felt like I had out grown it, and in all honesty, I was trying to outgrow it, because I didn't want to be looked at as a kid, with a kid mind, being in high school, and doing all this other shit, not that, you know, it was like, oh, that's looked down upon, and, I mean, maybe to some dumb people's eyes, it's probably looked down upon, but, it was just more of, again, like a transitional experimental phase of, of gaming for me, so I wasn't really playing much of Mario, I mean, Mario was still kind of there, Crash, I just kind of not wanted to, not that I was trying to form bad thoughts about it, it was just like, I'm, I was just trying to kind of disconnect from it, and <laughs> I kind of made a worse decision in terms of gaming, because I tried to get into Call of Duty, and I just did not like it, I didn't, there was nothing, I felt nothing playing these games, so I was like, you know what, fuck this shit, I'm gonna sell this game, and I'm gonna go back to Crash. And so I did. So I said before that Crash has helped me in a lot of ways. Not only did it get me into gaming, but it's actually what got me into YouTube. I don't think I've ever really mentioned this story before, but <clears throat> I always thought YouTube has always been like the... Kind of, ma not mature, but it's more of just like, there's people that cuss a lot in these videos. <laughs> Look what I've become. <laughs> so, you know, there was, um... I always, there was a time where I was, I saw YouTube, I knew what YouTube was back in like 08, 07, around the time that I was still fairly young, and was only about a good three or four years in its lifespan as a website, and so I always saw it was there, and I was always like, oh, YouTube, but then I was like, well, from what I know of YouTube, people make weird videos, and they cuss a lot, I don't really know if I should even be, my mom might not let me be on this site, I don't know, but one day I was cruising on, around Wikipedia, for Crash Twin Sanity, and uh, back when that was still relatively new, and I was like, let's go down to the references page. I don't know why, I usually skip the references page, but I just saw that they had a storyboard video. It's probably down below if I can find it. This right here, if it's, if the link's there, that is the first YouTube video I ever watched. It was of Crash. And I was like, I want to check out this storyboard video of Crash Twin Sanity. So I clicked it, and I watched it. And just from there, I started watching other Crash related videos and I just started watching YouTube videos. So Crash is what got me into YouTube and it wasn't until around 2009, like early 2009 that, <clears throat> 2009 that my neighborhood friends and I made a YouTube channel and that, that was Painbusters 316. So we were trying to be more of like a faux jackass kind of a thing where we were doing stupid, not harmful necessarily, but just dumb little stunts. That channel did not take off. <laughs> so, I mean, for a while it did. Somehow I made a dedicated to Rich Alvarez a stupid Mario Brothers trailer video and that got like a million views. I don't know how, but I'm going off topic. Painbusters didn't really take off. But Crash, the point of the story, this part of the story is that Crash got me into watching YouTube, which got us into making a YouTube channel. And that's how I got my start on YouTube. And just from that point on when I was like, you know what, I have a formed opinion now about games and certain kinds of games. I've tried doing Call of Duty stuff. 
I do not like it. So when I tell you guys that I don't like Call of Duty, I've got some experience on that front. I've played the games. I'm not just speaking out of my ass like someone who's like, I don't like this game. I've never played it, but it offends me somehow. Like, <laughs> no. I've played the I've played a few Call of Duty games. I played some Halo. I never touched Battlefield, so whatever. But uh I don't like those games. And it doesn't fulfill me with anything. No enjoyment, no kind of, you know, that kind of gamer rage where you want to continue on and press on more to beat something on it, like in it, in the game. I, I had nothing. I felt nothing. But with Crash and with Mario and these kinds of more platformy, uh, platforming, uh, family-friendly kinds of games, like those just, I'm a cartoonist. At heart, I'm a cartoonist, and I'm this kind of gamer that loves cartoons. So... Those are the kinds of games I want to make, and those are the kinds of games I want to keep playing, and those are the kinds of games I want back for this generation, because we have lost that kind of magic, and I'm getting off topic again. But literally everything that I am, and literally everything that I've done in this more creative aspect, you know, in this sense, with the drawing and playing games, literally can all be traced back to Crash. And that is why I am thankful for... Crash Bandicoot. That is why I cannot just make a simple little 2D animation for Crash's 20th anniversary, and that's my little fan way of celebrating it. Maybe some people will see it. Maybe I'll get like a couple hundred or a couple thousand hits, and then we're just going to go along our way. I can't do that. I want to go all out. I've wanted to see what kind of, in the right hands, not to say that my hands are necessarily the right hands, but in the in someone's hands who could take careful precision into making this film, how would a film about Crash look? I figured I'd give it a shot. That's why this project came around, and that's essentially my story. So, happy Thanksgiving, guys. I am thankful for these kinds of games. I love these kinds of games. That's why I'm so pumped for ukulele, and I hope, and uh, Shantae have Genie Hero for being a 2D side-scroller, but... These kinds of games are what I enjoy. These kinds of games are what I love. And I now I know now that no one's going to take that away. That passion and that desire to have these kinds of games around. Because there's still an audience for these kinds of games. And yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to stop uh, rambling on now. Uh, I'll see you guys later. I've got more videos planned. So just some insight. I wanted to share. Do something for you know Thanksgiving. Have a Thanksgiving themed discussion video. So that's really it. I'm just rambling now at this point. I'll see you guys later. Take care. And happy Thanksgiving. Or before Thanksgiving. Or after Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. See you guys. Take care.